So one very humorous and kind of pathetic thing that people say nowadays is if they're trying to cope with their behavior that is they know is bad, or it's bad for other people, bad for themselves, if they're trying to cope or justify their own behavior, they will often talk of themselves as if they're not actually people. They will dehumanize themselves. They will say, oh, I'm sorry, it's not my fault. I'm, I'm not really a human. I'm actually a giant chemical reaction, and I, I can't control what I'm actually doing. That is one of the most, I don't know, it's pathetic. I don't know how exactly to react to it, but it's really common to see people nowadays who instead of owning up to their behavior will start saying things, oh, well, you know, I'm just uh, addicted to this or I just have, uh, you know, I just have problems with things like this or, you know, I just got, I got a dopamine addiction or, um, you know, I have mental health issues and somehow like this excuses me. And uh, I, I just find it very funny. Now, last year or so, I forget when exactly, I did a video called Resisting Temptation. In fact, you might be able to call this video Resisting Temptation 2, Resisting Temptation Reloaded. I don't know. I'll think of some kind of name for it. But either way, um, I, I did that video ultimately on the fact that so many people will email me or ask me, oh, how, how do I quit this habit, yada, yada, yada. And I will always tell them, what are you talking about? Like, this is something that is directly within your moral control, right? Uh, and I gave people some advice for, you know, how to resist temptation, you know, how, you know, separate yourselves uh, from a position of temptation and things like that. Um, but, you know, a lot of people, it's almost like the default the worldview nowadays that people refuse to be responsible. Like, the idea of being responsible for your own actions and owning them is so alien to people that they will speak as if the, like their behavior happens to them as if they don't choose their behavior you know co common examples that people will get me you know ask me about is i don't know do, like minor drug addictions or or pornography or like all these kind of things like none of them i mean pornography just to, as to use that as a an as example pornography is just not an addiction in any way shape or form okay if you're addicted to some kind of uh, chemical, right? If you're chemically dependent on something, if you don't have it, you will, you might start dehydrating and convulsing and you need severe medical care. Okay. You, you'll, you'll need a lot of what you got to put in an IV. You got to take care of this person as they recover from their addiction. Pornography ain't an addiction in any way. I mean, people describe it as that like colloquially, but it's not, I mean, it's just a, a habit that people are, get used to doing. They, they just, repeatedly do it and oh it feels good I'm gonna keep doing it and then people who refuse to take moral agency will use this this line of addiction as a kind of a cope and here's how you know that it's not an addiction okay here's how we know that pornography and cooming is not an addiction because we can take you we will put we can put you in a room in a chair in the middle of nowhere okay with a bunch of people watching you and you will not spontaneously touch yourself you will not do that in front of other people because you do have that moral control to resist that. And you, you have that at any time. Um, but, you know, it, and if you don't consume pornography, you don't start, oh, I, I'm foaming from the mouth. I, oh, I need my addiction. I need my fix. That doesn't happen. It's fake. That, that's not a thing. Um, so people have used this line of addiction or the idea of, oh, you know, I'm, I'm like this dopamine robot that I know and I have to do these behaviors as a cope for them really being weak willed and probably not even being weak willed. What I said in the last video is this. A lot of people will try to play both sides. They will try to get fleeting enjoyment from things that they know are bad and things that they know will hurt them or things that they know will hurt other people. They will try to get those enjoyments. And then they still want to seem morally superior. So they will say, oh, well, you know, I do these things. Oh, but oh, I, I wish I could stop. To, oh, they're just so bad. You know, I, I try so hard to like not do this, but I just can't help myself. Oh, my goodness. That, that whole justification, which you didn't see people, people in the past making. This is a very modern, this is like a 20th, 21st century cope, right? That can only be possible in a world of, you know, neuroscience and, and psychiatry. They have given us this new verbiage to talk about human behavior as if it's not you making a decision, but, oh, well, we, d we can describe it in chemical terms. Therefore, it's the chemicals that's not you. In fact, you don't actually exist, so you can't be respons responsible for anything. You're just some passive observer to this robot that you live in. That, like, that, that is 
the the vision of the world that they are putting out there. And a lot of people will fall for it, not because they really fall for it, not because they actually believe it, but because it is so convenient, because it gives people this moral out. They can say, oh, well, I'm not responsible for the things I'm doing, like no big deal. So I, I, I can have this duplicity where I'm enjoying things that I know are bad, um, and I can still pretend like I know that they're bad, right? Um, so that is absurd. and. You know, the, the, the shame is we don't, like, we do call some people on this. Like, children will do this 100% of the time. Children will always confabulate reasons why they want the cookie and they have to have the cookie and they have to do this and they have to do this, that, or the other. But for whatever reason, um, some adults, quote-unquote adults, kidults, right, can get away with this kind of behavior and people don't call them on it immediately because there's this entire edifice of, you know, pseudo-psychiatry and psychology that justifies it to people. It makes it sound intellectual to just, you know, do whatever you want, okay? And it's, it's totally silly. Um, now, I do want to add something else. Um, in that last video on resisting temptation, I did give people some advice. You know, although you do have ultimate moral authority over the things you do, there are some heuristics, there are some rules of thumb you can take to make making those decisions easier, okay? Because you know, things that you have as a habit, they are a little more difficult to overcome. I mean, you can still easily overcome them, right? It's, it's an issue of will. Um, but you can easily uh, make things better by separating yourselves from the temptation, right? One thing that I didn't really pound on in that, in that video, but I want to talk about now, is, uh, you know, there's something I omitted, and it's actually yet another biblical recommendation, right? So, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus makes this passing remark. People will awful, often uh, quote, quote it, but he'll say, okay, well, you know that adultery is bad, okay? But if you look at a woman with the intent of possibly committing adultery with her, that's basically just as bad, okay? Now, he doesn't go into big detail about why that is, but l let's think about this. What I see a lot of the times is, I mean, to use the example of pornography again, okay? A lot of guys will say, oh, I don't want to watch pornography. And here's what their brains will do. Their brains, uh, well, now I'm talking about it in third person, but you know what I mean. In, they think they're very smart. They will think things like this. Ah, see, I don't want to watch pornography, but, you know, maybe I'll just, oh, I, you know, I have sexual needs. Maybe I just need some stimulation. It's natural. Oh, I need this. So I'll just look at, uh, you know, pictures of girls in bikinis or something like that. Right, you know, oh, I, I, I'm addicted. I, I, I can't quit told cold turkey because that's hard, quote unquote, because a scientist told me that, which is nonsense. Um, but oh, so I'll, I'll go like instead of doing the whole thing, I'll go 90% of the way there. And when you're doing that, you have more or less already consented to do it, right? So that that's Jesus's point. Like if you're if you're tempted by sexual temptations, the easiest way to stop you know, committing those sins is not to go, not, you know, not to, you know, pick up a girl in the club, hang out with her, take her back to your house, and then say, oh, well, you know, I'm not going to do it with you. Like, that's a very stupid way to resist sin. It's just not, do not start going down that path. It's much easier to prevent uh, bad behaviors, prevent yourself from falling into temptation, not by going 90% of the way and then stopping, but stopping at the very beginning, right? Saying, okay, uh, you know, I'm just not, I'm not even going to like look at women uh, in a way to size them up for sexual exploits. I'm just going to stop there. I'm, you know, if I see pictures of girls like this on the internet on a random web form or something, I'm just going to scroll by, I'm going to minimize, I'm going to block that account, whatever, right? So that is the real way to resist these things. And because uh, really, you know, if you are consenting, like if you're starting to walk down that path, you've already tacitly said that you want that. And you're doing exactly what I talked about. You're doing the thing where you say, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm trying to resist this, right? Oh, but it's so hard. And here, let me get closer and closer and closer and closer to the temptation. Oh, woe is me, I can't do it, right? It, it's, it's utterly, uh, the thing is, you, you are not de deceiving anyone but yourself. You really are not deceiving anyone. And everyone else around you who's going along with it, they know that you're full of crap too. They're just like, okay, yeah, it, like, I, I, it's so annoying when you see people like this nowadays, when you're like, uh, you know, people will do impulsive things that anyone can resist, and they will just make up these reasons. I, I don't know. It's just kind of frustrating, to be honest. Um, so th that's about it. Um, do not trust anyone who talks about humans as if they are not 
humans. May I don't know, maybe you are an NPC. Maybe you can't control your behavior. I don't freaking know. I'm going to guess you're not, okay? But that that's kind of the irony of it. Like, modern society gives you the verbiage to make you an NPC, to make you feel like you don't actually have control over your own behavior. And that's the thing that's most upsetting. But don't trust anyone who's like that. Don't even, don't, try not to ever talk about humans uh, in terms of, oh, we're just chemical reactions and we can't, uh, you know, there's no, I mean, even if you believe in mere materialism, okay, it is still legitimate to talk about a complex system at multiple layers of abstraction. It's still appropriate to talk about humans as if they have will, even if you don't believe in a soul, frankly. Um, but don't trust those people who try to justify human behavior by talking about it as if it's just something beyond your control. If it's not in your control, whose control is it in? I'm sorry. Like, this is just stupid. Um, yeah, and resist temptation at the beginning, not at the end. Those are the points. That's what I got to say. Resisting temptation reloaded. I don't know what I'm going to call this one.